In this video, I'd like to give some helpful tips for compositing a real person with a 3D scene. Please see the video description for a complete technical explanation of chroma key, motion tracking, and importing keyed footage into Blender. First of all, I want to emphasize how this technique is also helpful when a scene has objects that need to overlap with the original footage. In this situation, for example, I placed plants and flowers on the ground. And, as you can see, the end result is a seamless integration with the actor's feet. The plants are placed in the front and background to give more realism. In addition, I want to point out an important aspect when we import the keyed footage in Blender. As previously stated, the video is imported as an image plane. In previous videos, I said that the material should be set in the emission mode. This, however, requires further explanation. The emit approach implies that the video is used as a light emitter. Furthermore, it is unaffected by the 3D scene's light or shadows. This is good when the source video's lighting has been carefully adjusted to meet the final 3D scene. Also, the video must be exported from the software used for the chroma key process in order for the brightness, color, and contrast to be correct for the final compositing. However, this is not an easy task. As a result, it is frequently useful to utilize the standard principled material when importing the video. Let's take a closer look at this. When we import the video in the emission mode, the video itself is used as an emitting surface. And here is the result in the 3D scene. But when we connect it to the base color input, we notice a minor but noticeable difference in the lighting of the actor. This is because the material now receives an additional illumination from the light in the scene. As I previously stated, if the studio lighting was precisely adjusted, this approach would change the brightness and color of the video itself. However, in this case, I used a diffuse lighting in the studio, and it doesn't match the light I used in the 3D scene. In the 3D world, indeed, we have direct sunlight. As a result, there are two different illuminations. In this situation, using base color helps to better merge the real footage with the 3D environment. But there's more to consider. Moving on, we can see that the leaves are casting shadows on the actor. However, if I change the material to emission, the shadows disappear. This is another thing to keep in mind. The conclusion is that using a standard material set to base color is preferable, unless you have extremely exact control over the lighting in the studio when recording the video. However, it's always better to test out both options before making a decision. As you can see, we have an HDRI image. It can be used for both global illumination and as the actual background of the scene. The challenge now is to produce believable compositing between this background and the 3D scene. First off, rather than a square floor, I suggest making a circle. With a square floor, the edges are sharp and the separation with the background becomes apparent immediately. A circle, however, matches more effectively. A basic circle can be used to do this. It doesn't, however, have any internal faces to which a material may be applied. As a result, you must enter Edit Mode and select Grid Fill. This command adds a grid of faces with the appropriate topology. Now, I'm able to apply the material. Remember, though, that you must first apply the scale. Otherwise, the texture projection will be inaccurate. For a better view, I disable the depth of field. 
As you can see, the separation between the foreground and background is now more gradual. I also applied a color correction to the texture of the grass to make it like the background. This is the original texture. Keep in mind that you can deactivate a node by pressing the M key on the node you want to disable. And here with the color and tone corrections. But that's not enough. I also modified the plane in sculpt mode. The transition with the background is more natural thanks to a few irregularities in the ground. Finally, I turned on the depth of field. In this way, the background and the plane are slightly blurred, and the compositing is even more realistic. As you can see, there are many aspects to consider for an optimal result. And here we are only considering a few of them. Let us now quickly move on to the simulation of the scene. It is pretty straightforward in this case. I added a particle system to simulate leaves arising from the ground. I created an emitter and added a particle system in emitter mode. The emitter is positioned close to the appropriate marker in the original video. The particle distribution is set to jittered and even distribution is turned off making the distribution less even. I made a small adjustment to the rotation and speed parameters, but the forces I'm going to add will determine the final outcome. Additionally, to give the particles a more irregular motion, I slightly adjusted the Brownian property. However, as previously stated, the principal movement is provided by external forces. As a result, I've introduced two fields. The wind, as well as a vortex. The wind determines the main path of the leaves' movement. I also increase the noise in order to have a less regular pattern. In addition, I animated the wind's intensity to provide a more realistic effect. Then, I added the vortex. This is used to create a spiral pattern. Again, I animated the intensity. You can also see that the particles do not start at the beginning of the timeline, but only later on. To do this, simply modify the start frame. Of course, I had to make the actual leaves so that they could be used as particles. Therefore, I modeled the leaves, which are based on real photographs. At this stage, I grouped the various leaves into a collection. Finally, I set this collection as the source of the particles. I also suggest caching on disk and baking. There you have it. As usual, you can download the related video to practice it yourself.